What's up? Welcome back to Bob Monsanto Tanks. Today we're going to be deep cleaning my Blue Bolt shrimp tank. Let's go! Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. As I mentioned, I'm gonna be deep cleaning this tank. So to start off, I got my supplies here. I have my prime, my dechlorinator. That's just really to neutralize any ammonia because I'm gonna be deep cleaning this tank. I might kick up a little bit of substrate and that can release, you know, bad things into the water. So that helps with that. Also gonna be doing a water change. My sechum stability, that's good bacteria. Add that back in as well. I just do that with every water change because why not? I have some organic bee pollen available by Montage Home. I have Mount that clay that you can also get there. And then I have my cleaning tools. This is more for a polishing job. I have a, uh, what do you call this thing? A razor blade, that's the one. And then, oh yeah, my little spoon there. And then, uh, oh yeah, obviously aquascaping tools. I got some stuff over here. I got the uh, airline, I got uh, the hose. The end of the airline has a little valve so that I can control the flow for my water change. Scissors, this thing, a net, this, whatever this thing is. Uh, let's clean the tank. What's the worst thing can happen? Stop right there. First thing you have to do before we get into the tanks is clean your hands thoroughly. Wash your hands. I use uh, Dawn dish soap. It's a great grease fighter. The grease fighting action of Dawn. And you just wash. I wash like all the way up my forearm to my elbow. And then you make sure you dry it off thoroughly. And we're good to go. Ready to get into the tank. Alright, so I'm down here in the tank. And I do have baby shrimp in here. So I do have to be careful not to pull, you know, too many out. It's okay if you pull out a few because you can just put them back in after but uh, you don't want to cause them too much stress i can see a couple babies over in the moss here so i may have to be careful when i'm dealing with all this over here basically i'm going to be taking out the floaters uh thinning out the crypts and then taking out a bunch of this moss over here so hopefully it will look clear and bright and beautiful because it's I, I just find it's too dark in areas um, and I want it more clear so I can actually see my shrimp. I know they're in that forest somewhere. I'm just not exactly sure. So, uh, that said, I'm going to start with just pulling out some of the floaters. Uh, actually, most of the floaters, realistically, will come out. Hopefully, I don't cause too much glare by pulling up the light shade. I wouldn't want to ruin my picture. Also, I'm going to try to do this as quick as possible but also as thorough as possible just so that the video is not like an hour long because it does take me <laughs> quite a quite a long time like it's it's actually going to take me a lot more time than you will see in this video to finish everything because i'm going to condense it down for you make it nice and digestible just so that you can see how to how to achieve what i achieve so I'm just gonna shut up and remove these floaters. Do, 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 do. This is where I really have a good time. Damn. So there's actually duckweed in this tank. Uh, somehow, some way, you know, it gets in one tank. It gets in all the tanks. I've been slowly trying to eliminate it because i hate duckweed it's just so annoying and small to deal with uh, so that's why i'm busting up the net here um so it's gonna be you know more chance of scooping up a shrimp but i can also get out more of the duckweed because i don't care uh, i want this stuff out of my tanks go away have it now you'll see there's uh stuff stuck here sorry that wasn't really on camera there's stuff stuck here so i just get the syringe filled with water and then i squeeze it out into the net um that's not really on camera sorry about that uh maybe i'll get a b-roll footage of it for you later okay i get all the floaters See, there's always one piece of duck we left. I hate it, but it happens. So we get that out. And now there is one piece of salvinia I can see 
and that will regrow into hundreds of pieces of salvinia and it'll be beautiful and there's still a piece of duckweed oh i got it i got it there's no more duckweed in this tank it's gone you gotta look from below in order to see the stupid roots okay so floaters are dealt with what's next on my list what's next on my list i need to take moss out as you can see here oh hello little baby hello little baby over there so i'm going to start um draining the water and we'll get the moss out around the same time so i just take my hose with a uh, uh panty hose on the end so that no baby shrimp gets sucked up and i will clamp it I don't know, I'll do like a 10 or 20% water change, something like that. And we'll start the draining. And set that to the side. You guys don't need to see the bucket. Okay, now this moss. I'm just going to go in and get the loose stuff to start. Don't want to start, um, I don't want to start cutting too early and get too many loose bits if I can just pull stuff out without cutting. Because once you cut moss, it is game over. There's gonna be little bits everywhere. You're never gonna get those little bits out. And you're gonna have to go in later once those little bits grow into big pieces of moss and you're gonna have to pull those out. Holy, oh my God. So there's a lot of stuff here. So how to minimize getting baby shrimp when you're pulling out this much moss is to kind of play with it near the surface and you'll scare them out hopefully uh, take a good look in to just double check that you're not getting any little guys and then what I do is I lift it out and I pop it back in that kind of scares them right so then they'll jump off and so I lift it out I pop them back in hopefully anybody that was hanging on has let go and we'll grab this big clump Wow, so it's obviously not just moss. There's a uh, sabwasser tang as well mixed in here and I will spend the next eternity separating this moss and sabwasser tang for sale on Bob Moss. <laughs> uh, oh my god, you can see like it was so thick that the moss underneath was actually not getting light and it was turning brown. That's when you know you got to clear it out. So we continue with this process just kind of pulling and dunking oh my god and as you, yeah there's gonna be a lot of moss here it's gonna take me a little bit of time so I'm not doing anything different or anything special it's just gonna be this until I feel like I've pulled out enough moss to make the tank clean and bright again uh, I don't start cutting until later don't worry you won't miss the trim job I'm just going to um, skip ahead to when to when this moss is done <laughs> how about that one eternity later all right so i have a bunch of the moss removed i'm not quite done yet but now's a good time with the water draining to remove the sponge filter i'm going to give it a good squeeze uh honestly i just do it in tap water and then i put it back into uh, the I, I put it into my water change water to like soak it with fresh stuff I'll show you I'll, I'll show you what I do in some b-roll footage maybe um, but good oh I need the sponge maybe this into that and gotta make sure there's no babies on it make sure there's no babies on it I think we're good and then I pull it out and throw it in my bucket and make a mess oh my god did I ever and now that the sponge filters removed from the back I actually have more free room back there to remove the moss and and go nuts and whatever whatever I was doing so I'm gonna continue to do that <laughs> you know it always looks worse before it looks better but that's okay you don't make any mistakes just happy little accidents you know there was a study done if Bob Ross did a painting he was there's a 90% chance he was gonna put a tree in it and then if you put a tree there's a 93% chance he was going to put a second tree because trees need friends you know me, I think everybody needs a friend. Oh uh, yeah, I think I completely blanked. This is a great time to dose your seed and prime because you're going to be kicking up substrate and uh, 
yeah, it just helps prevent any bad things from happening. So at this point, I'll, I'll admit I'm pretty fed up with using those uh, little tongs or whatever to pull out moss. So what I'm going to do is come in and just, this is where we get trimming. You got to be careful. It's going to create a lot of little loose ends. Uh, but just trim any long bits that aren't like aesthetically pleasing to you anymore. And they'll just go loose into the tank. If you don't pick them up, like if you don't get them out, they happen to find a little hiding spot. That's okay. They'll just grow more moths. That's really... It is really what we want in the long run. We just... We also want the tank to look nice right now, right? It's Christmas. <laughs> so just give things a little trim. A little snip to snip. Snip, snap, snip, snap, snip, snap. See anything else that needs a trim, guys? Get in here, maybe. Oh, no. So that looks like that already looks loose. Oh, yeah, right here is too long. Right here is too long. Okay, and now come back in with this and get any big bits. Oh, there we go, beautiful. And now I grab. <coughs> where'd that thing go? All right, and this is where you grab your shrimp net again. And then you're just gonna do some sweeps and get the little, these, these little loose bits that are annoying to pick up. See, they just go right into the net. Wow. This is once again, a higher percentage chance of picking up baby shrimp, but that's okay. Cause they're just gonna go into the bucket and we're gonna, we're gonna find them in the bucket. We're gonna get them out of there. We're gonna rescue them, get them back into their home eventually. <laughs> Also, if you're really worried that you got babies, just let the net sit for a minute and let any shrimp find their way out that happened to get in there. I'm not sure if I got any on that sweep, but you're just going to do these sweeps until you kind of clean up all these little odds and ends and bits and bobs. And I'm going to be doing that repeatedly throughout this process, even while while trimming and after trimming the cryptocorn here just to help because there's so much like look it's everywhere just to just to help clean up the tank get that get that stuff out of there not that it's a bad thing it just makes it look a little messier than what i uh really want all right so i'm gonna keep doing that and we'll be back when i go to trim the crypts ready to get brave okay and now while still not perfect there's still stuff over here I need to get the crypts out in order to really, you know, get get the last bits of the moss and some wasser tang out. I'm just cleaning this up so I can actually see inside the tank here. Okay, and now the crypts towards the back, I can actually leave a bit bigger. You know, you, you want like plant grading. You want them to be shorter in the front and uh, get taller in the back. So the ones in the very front, I'm probably gonna be trimming right down to the bottom and then they'll be getting bigger and bigger as we go back. So for for crypts, legit, I just go in, find like the root, the, the base of like the stem, and just clip, 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 little clip there, and that'll just, that'll clean it right up. That'll get them right out of there. And I'll be able to actually see in my tank. It'll be crazy. I haven't seen in this tank in forever. All right, so I guess we'll just time lapse the cryptocorin trimming, and you can also, as you go, it's probably a good idea to remove some of the leaves so it doesn't get too crazy, because we're going to be doing a big trim. This is a forest, and uh, yeah. I will talk in a little bit, I guess. <laughs> See, I'm going to try and keep the video short and sweet, even though this has taken me uh, days. All right, so at this point, I have done a good amount of cleaning out crypts, cleaning out the moss, 
the water is a little murky, just all the stuff I've kicked up. So I'm gonna let it settle for a little bit. I'm actually gonna go watch some football. Um, so I'll be back in a few hours to continue this process and kind of see what the tank looks like once the water settles a little. I don't really have to worry about uh, but too much, you know, there's less water volume, but there's still filtration going on here. There's still water movement. Um, the prime is in there. I'm probably going to dose some stability now, actually. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Let's dose some stability. Some good bacteria help help with uh, cycling and keeping shrimp alive and whatnot. And I'll be back later. Uh, bye. Later that day. So it's much later in the day and now you can see, uh, well, hopefully you can see that it's it's a little bit thinner but it's not quite what I want. So I'm still going to grab my scissors and clip a few more crips here. It's just not not quite thin enough. Maybe just one in the front. A uh, couple big leaves maybe. Maybe one of these. Come back here. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah. A couple of those. So I'll do this real quick. And there we go, that's nice and thinned out. And now the little uh, crypt nubbins aren't the most aesthetically pleasing, but they will actually grow new sprouts of the, the crypts, like crypts will sprout from there, nothing to worry about. Uh, I think that looks about what I want. I am gonna move this Nana Golden over to here to fill out that spot. And now let's do a few more sweeps to get out some more of this the blosser tang and moss and stuff because as you can see tons of this little junk and this is the junk that really makes your tank look cluttered so getting it out helps to just it really really brightens it makes it look cleaner like it creates little dark patches having some blosser tang caught in all your plants <laughs> so if you can get out the little chunks and not get tons of shrimp then you know that's a big win Genius! i have Tons of babies in this tank now that I can see. Oh, there's a little guy right there. there. A bunch of little guys over here. So I do have to be sort of careful. But I am putting this into buckets of tank water that you <laughs> saw me drain. So it's not like the shrimp are going into the garbage or something like that. They're just going into another bucket where I will find them at a later date. And you can too if you follow my instructions. Never lose a shrimp again. I guarantee it. The real pro tip is using uh, white buckets so that you can actually see the shrimp contrasted against the bottom. Dark buckets are just, well, too dark. So that's why I don't use these. I use the blue Lowe's buckets for the fresh water, not for the old water. So what do we got? Let's take a look. Let's take a look and see. Here's what we're looking at so far. I think it is pretty cleared up. <laughs> if you, <laughs> I think you would agree. That'd be a fantastic little place. To take your shoes off and let your naked feet run through there. Uh, yeah. So I guess now I can clean the glass. You know, the floaters are out. The uh, the moss is out. The crypt is cleaned up, thinned out, etc whatever whatnot so i'll just reposition this camera for you and then the next step for deep cleaning because you know it's it's not just deep cleaning like the plants and stuff it's deep cleaning the aquarium the tank so the glass is very very important so i'm going to move that filter and then i just use my razor blade and you just scrape the glass and get uh you get the biofilm off the front so that it's nice and beautiful and you can see through it because as you can I don't know if you can tell on the camera there but it's kind of kind of cloudy well it's the water's not cloudy the glass is cloudy because there's stuff growing on it so I'm gonna scrape that off oh, this will take me a little bit because it's a 20 gallon maybe I should have done this tutorial with it with one of my smaller tanks oh well live and learn So don't try this at home. What's going on? Something stupid, I'm sure. But I actually 
need to move this shelf down one rung. Maybe one day I'll actually do it. <clears throat> this is only temporary. Don't try this at home. I don't have the clearance to get my arm into the tank all the way with it back. Okay, there we go. And now this is only going to be temporary. Don't worry. Oh my god. Oh, shoot. Oh, fuck. Don't get your arm stuck in your tank. That could be bad news. And then this one's going to stick way over here and work my way in. So, as you saw there, I do a couple of passes over each spot with the razor blade to make sure I get, you know, all the all the gross stuff off, or at least the, the hard buildup, because I am going to polish it here in a minute. I just noticed, oh my god, there's still duckweed in this. It was in the crypts all along. Just going to do a little sweep for these leaves, because there's a few of them. <sighs> Too many. For me to grab them lazy, you know. It's easier just to net them. Then I can get some more moss too. You're gonna kick up a lot of shit. The water's gonna, you know, once again, it's gonna look worse before it looks better. But trust me, this will provide you a bright, beautiful tank. In the long run, follow old Bobby's instructions here. Old Bobby. Now, the final step here, as I mentioned, is a little polish. This will just make things nice and shiny. I mean, you know, maybe we might have missed the spot with the razor blade, especially in here in the water. So you just gotta make sure you get it all. So we'll do that, and we'll be back in a minute. Why do I talk like that? Who's a good shrimp? Who's a good shrimp? Who's a good shrimpy? Oh, good shrimpy. Oh, good shrimpy. <laughs> Here's another little pro tip. If you run hang on back filters like I do, if you should, well, if you should have a intake sponge, not if you have an intake sponge, you should have an intake sponge if you uh, keep shrimp. You don't really have to squeeze this out until you see it visually get, you know, compact. It'll literally like, there'll be like a bend in it that you can see and obviously the flow is crap. So right now it's still good. I might have to squeeze it out towards the end of this as I'm kicking all this stuff up. But right now, the, the sponge there is actually still fine. So I'm gonna leave the hang on back alone, but I am gonna squeeze out the sponge filter. You'll see that. Um, actually, I might as well do that now. So as I stated previously, I do just clean the sponge uh, in my uh, under a tap. Uh, it's not a big deal. The chlorine in your tap water is not a high enough concentration to really kill the bacteria. You need a good like 20 minutes of contact time in order to actually affect the bacteria. You might kill uh, a few, but you're not going to kill off the, the main colonies. So you just squeeze it, run it under the water. This one was very, very, very dirty and took me way longer than I thought it would. Uh, but we eventually got it done and the sponge is ready to go back into the tank so we'll just do that uh, before I put it in the tank I didn't get it on film but I do dip it into the water change water just to get some fresh clean water on it I dose the prime or I make sure that prime has been dosed in the tank and then we add the sponge filter back in ta-da sponge filter and we're in business and now we are reaching the final steps so I actually pre-prepare my water I did this the day before I started all this um, I probably should have did it at the start but I just take one scoop of the GH plus the, the salty shrimp GH plus and then this is pure RO water in the one bucket and I just empty that bucket into the other bucket that mixes it enough and tends to dissolve it I give it a few stirs throughout the day and the minerals dissolve and we're good to go and before I add the fresh water back into the tank, I do just like to dose a couple little things. You've seen this before if you've been around the channel. I do one spoonful of Montmorel Night Clay, available at Bad and then I do one spoonful of organic bee pollen. The Montmorel Night Clay adds in some some good minerals and micronutrients and stuff like that. I've gone over this in detail in a, in a past video. And then the bee pollen adds, once again, it's a superfood, has tons of micronutrients, uh, and actually I think it has some protein too, which is kind of cool. 
and now it is finally time to add the clean uh, water change water back into the tank so this is where I use my airline put my airline in to the bucket clamp it to the side here use the air valve to control the flow and I just want a couple drips a second um, just like I'm drip acclimating uh, back you know any shrimp uh, I could do a faster flow but this is more for uh, it's a safety thing so that so that you know Worst case scenario, I'm just drip acclimating my shrimp, you know, if, if the water doesn't match perfectly, uh, the, the water does match perfectly, but this is just, it's a, it's a force of habit. A any, anyway, uh, yeah, you add the water back in, a couple drips a second, and you will guarantee no shrimp deaths. Yeah, I, I promise. Never ever? Never ever ever. And finally, before we wrap this up, we do have to address the shrimps in the buckets. So what I have done here is moved all the, or most of the plants from one bucket into the other. So there's going to be a ton of shrimp in this one bucket with, with all the plants, but to make sure that I have a bucket to put those plants in, I checked this one for shrimp. There's actually one uh, in here. I'm not quite sure if you can see it on the camera, but there is a shrimp in here that I'm gonna get out. I just grabbed the turkey baster and uh, squeeze it out, put it in a cup and dump it back into the tank. Uh, I'm going to check this over the next few hours. Oh, there's the, there you can see it. I'm gonna check this over the next few hours and uh, make sure there's no other shrimp in here. And then I'm going to use a net, get out the rest of the plants and this will be like my clean water so i'm going to slowly be moving plants over from from the one bucket into my clean water and making sure there's no shrimp on them and then from there doing whatever i want with the plants um yeah this is a foolproof method i promise uh it works 60 percent of the time every time and now let's take one more look at the tank the before we did the cleanup it was i mean it still looked pretty good it was very full very thick moss and now we'll go to the after where it's wow so bright it's actually empty uh it almost looks uh, bad right now give it a week to let it grow in and it'll it'll look beautiful again it's just a little unnatural with all the the trim you can see where I trimmed things out but they'll eventually grow back and it'll be awesome here you can see the crypts uh, a bit more closely very very thinned out uh, I do have that grading I mentioned so the front is basically clear-cut and then I kind of have it stepping up to be very very tall in the back and then when we have a look at the moss and the anubias over here uh, you can see there's still moss attached to the log it's still gonna grow in there's just a lot less there so um, when it comes time to maybe sell these shrimp it'll be a lot easier to get them out because I didn't know I had this many babies until I started doing this tank cleaning actually and we'll just do a nice little panoramic look you can see how beautiful and bright and shiny the tank is the shrimp are having a good time in there you can see the babies on the log you can see big ones back there it's actually like I said there's so many babies in here I had no idea can also see closely on the log I didn't actually pull out much of the java fern or the anubis anubis that was there that's still attached to the log uh, beautifully I didn't bother touching that with scissors at all either and here's just a look you can see some of the baby shrimp on the log so that is all thank you all so much for watching thank you very much thank you for making it to the end when you get to the actual end make sure to stay tuned there's some really funny outtakes on this one i promise with a video this long there are some good outtakes make sure to like the video subscribe if you're new here uh, hit the bell notification to never miss anything from me leave a comment below let me know if this is something uh, you're gonna do or if this was a complete waste of time uh, shout out to my patrons michael redmond and leather turtle my youtube members mitch bottom daniel cordon robert redmond Tater Salad, 3DRC, Jamie A, Jake FWTX, BJ Palmer, Gone Shrimpin', and Amanda Curry. Welcome to my club! 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 If you would like shoutouts like that and early access to content when I actually get it done early, uh, this one was a struggle for me, uh, just based off the length, you can probably tell. Support links are in the description. Also, my shop link is in the description, the one I've been mentioning and plugging all uh, all video here. Give me my money! I have a Twitch 24-7 stream. I have some other links in there, Discord, things like that. Make sure to check out my description below. Hope to see you again very soon. And remember, guys, until next time, 
Keep your shrimp hands strong. Bye bye now. Oh, it's finally finished. Oh, of course the furnace turned on. Of course it's rattling. <sighs> I'm gonna just roll with it. Okay, what was I gonna do? What was I saying? What was I saying? Cut. Well, shit, the baby woke up. Sound sync, sound syncing. This is for my sound syncing in my YouTube video. Oh, crap. Oh my god. There's so much here. This is crazy. I'm so tired of losing. I got nothing to do. No day to do it. I'll go out cruising. But there's no place to go. All night to get there. Is it any wonder I've got too much? Time on my hands taking away with my sanity. Do, 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 do. Stop me now. Having such a good time. I'm having a ball. Do, stop me now. If you want to have a good time, just give me a call. One eternity later. Oh no! Oh, baby. Oh, baby. About eight months of growth, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here. Can you get in my thing? Here we go. Here, come here. You guys, come here. Oh my god. Where's all this coming from? God. Damn it. Everything's falling. No. Oh, my foot's cramping. Oh my god. Ow. And now it only hurts when you touch it. <laughs> Motherfucker. Of course, now my water heater's on. Sponge. Oh, the thing. Do do do. Do 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 what a gross sound. Biceps are too big. <laughs>